so good. Tell me, oh. what, are you, what are you grateful for, Jude? What am I grateful for? Um, all my work that I've had this week and being incredibly busy and all my clients and uh, just being able to earn money in what is potentially a difficult time, right? Mm -hmm. So super grateful for everything that I've got going on. And, um, and as I was just saying to you, just to be able to afford my life as a single parent, I think is a, is a privilege and it's an honor to be able to do that with the work that I have. So, so grateful. And um, when I do my gratitude journal, I'll probably say that was in there probably about 80% of the time, you know? Mm. So, um, yeah, I think we're incredibly lucky with what we do. And, uh, and it was something I was thinking about it the other day. It was, something, it was something that I always, always wanted when I worked in the music industry, <clears throat> I just couldn't see a way of um, going up and getting promoted. Like you could go to managerial level, but you'd never own your own record company or anything like that. You know, you'd never work for yourself in that respect. And it was something that I always wanted. I always wanted to work for myself. I always wanted to choose my own hours. And, and I think as, as trainers and teachers, we, we can do that. We are incredibly lucky in that yeah. within reason, we can pick and choose our hours I work within school hours because that is my time and and you know what we were talking about last podcast about how you attract certain clients and guess what I have clients that come during the day and they only want day so super lucky that I don't I'm privileged enough that I can drop my child to school pick him up be there at night pretty present the most of the time and yeah I think that's something to be incredibly grateful for with our work over to yeah. you. What are you grateful for? I am grateful for my clients. Yeah. I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with them and um, you know, allowing, uh, allowing me to be a part of their journey to feel better, like in whatever capacity that is for them. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, I really, yeah, I really, I show you, yeah, I show a lot of, uh, I'm always grateful for the fact that I get to the opportunity that I get to work with people that I really like to work with yeah. and it's beautiful and then the challenges that they represent me I'm actually grateful for those challenges because um, they make me think about what I do um, and um, and just get better at it and uh, so yes yeah, so that's always exciting and actually just saying it now is always like oh yeah that feels really exciting. I can see your face it's yeah. great yeah. it's really nice yeah. and um, and then yeah clearly um, without a doubt, always grateful for my family, like my bro, my mom and dad, just uh, the kind of, like just growing up, you know, the kind of support structure that I had, um, yeah. just especially with the kind of environment um, that I know a lot of people grow up in. And um, just knowing the statistics of like family life these days as well, right? It's like so many divorces, so many broken homes, yeah. and lots of sing single parents. And, and then, um, <clears throat> so for me, it's like the fact that I kind of had that, structure from early on i mean like put it this way like the the house that uh my, the first house that my parents bought um and uh, the one that i was basically brought home from the hospital in wow. is what they still live in was what they still live in now as well you That's know so, so cool. they've yeah they created a community around um themselves there so i'm super grateful for that and um yeah just grateful for um, and an interesting one is uh, actually I realize it's, it's, it's um, well, well, you know where it's coming from. You know, it's not an egotistical or narcissistic thing, but I'm like, I'm, kind of, I'm grateful for me, actually. Is like, um, uh, hell it's, yeah, that's yeah. It's an important one. It's self love, <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it's not narcissistic. Yeah. Well, but this is the thing, right? People will think that will, that can border on uh, or like cross over into that, but uh, the oh, point yeah, narcissism is, 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 is a different thing, but go on, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's like, it, it's a different thing is like, but what I mean by that is um, showing myself the appreciation for where I'm at right now, given where I've come from and also appreciating where I'm going to. And so I'm kind of, I'm grateful for that journey and I'm grateful for me embracing that journey 
And uh, even though, you know, like I explained to you just before we started the podcast, I was like, May, this month of May can go fucking do one. <laughs> it's like weather wise, it's just been all over the shop. It's and it's terrible. just, yeah, it's just like driven me a little bit crazy. And then on top of that, it's, um, uh, yeah, I just, I felt like I was just slightly out of tune with myself and like the things I really like to do, want mm -hmm. to do, what my, uh, what my, uh, ideal future is and um and staying away from my uh, hellish hellish uh, potential and um and yeah it's, i just feel like i kind of like lost sight of that a little bit and um so i've just been trying to recalibrate uh for the month as the month has gone on i realized that at some point through so um yeah i'm just kind of showing um gratitude to that because it's difficult to feel like uh, you know you can be grateful when you're just not in tune um, mm. with things you know we're not in tune with yourself and and uh with the way you execute things but then the, the thing is is like it's the power's in my hands you know it's completely in my own hands in that sense like how i choose to live my day today how i choose to use my time is in my own hands and i notice again like you know i've mentioned this in previous podcasts like if i'm using if i've got more screen time going on then i know i'm being less productive mm -hmm. um uh, generally speaking, and um, uh, all yeah, and like more social media use definitely, and, and I know that I'm not in, I'm not in my zone. I'm not in my uh, zone of uh, focus where I feel good and doing the things I want to do. So it's just been like recognizing that and then just kind of being like, okay, it's fine. Like don't worry about it. Like trying to beat yourself up because I'm mm. super, um, uh, super capable of doing that is uh, just like decking myself for it and being like, oh, you idiot, just. You know, you've lost your way, whatever, whatever. But um, just being like, actually, <clears throat> where am I? And let's just go, let's just do that one thing that's going to help me move forward. And uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of grateful for that journey and the challenge of it and uh, zooming out and looking at the bigger picture and going, mm -hmm. hey, this, I'm in it right now here, but actually in the grand scheme of things, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. That's really cool. That's really cool, actually. And something that you were saying it just made me think about i think it's okay not to do the whole time i think we're, we all have moments where we lose that momentum and that drive that we had and i don't know about you but it's been a funny old couple of months like coming out of lockdown and just everything coming back in and are we okay to do this are we okay to do that and so i think i was listening to you and i was thinking i think it's okay to just take your Foot off the brake? No, wait, foot off the gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, foot off the brake, 100 miles an hour, I'm going. Become a NAS wrong. NASCAR racer. We should, we should know by now, the listeners and you, that I get things wrong like that quite a lot of the time. <laughs> so we know that I probably mean something else. Um, but it's okay to slow down. And like you say, it gives you that moment to assess why as well. Why? Why are you feeling like you can't quite get the concentration? And it's also nice that you can do that thing of zooming out and looking at the bigger picture. And I think that helps to refocus you as well. But also you said something else. So it's like something about being in your own hands. And isn't that nice that we've mm -hmm. got that opportunity? Our, it's like I was saying earlier, our work, that it is in our own hands. We choose to an extent when we're going to work, what we're going to do, how we're going to future our business and that kind of thing and you're not working for someone else you're not helping someone else's business to grow you're helping your business to grow so mm. and if you think about a business there's always moments of just plateau and then there's moments of growth isn't there so mm. it, this is this is your business and and yeah. I think that's okay so don't be too hard on yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> just, just just give me a virtual hug just... Yeah, well, you often do it for me. You often do it for me. We're like, right, okay, let's assess this situation. And I'm, I'm like, okay, yes. Yeah. Um, like last week, we cheat days. Uh, and so yeah. this week, just listening to you, I was like, you know, it's, not, it's okay not to do the whole time and beat mm. yourself up about it, which I know that you sometimes do. So, yeah, get chill. It's okay. Yeah, chill out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Go and eat your burger. It's... Go on, it's fine. <laughs> mm, oh, <that's> <laughs> Don't! I want a bad. burger. Did you hear? I was bad. thinking about it. <laughs> oh, bad! Is uh, I'm gonna have jerk chicken tonight. Mm. Do you, are you gonna jerk. are you gonna make it yourself? Oh no, I don't know how to make it yet. But um, oh. there's this there's this place. Guess what the name is? White men can't jerk. 
right? Down in, the down in Peckham, such a good name, like, uh, you know, homage Ricky. to the film, White Men Can't Jump. And um, That's brilliant. yeah, they just do some amazing jerk chicken. And um, thanks to, yeah, thanks to my boy, son and uh, Mo for introducing me to them because they're just so, so good so good okay. and i just had yeah again big problem is just stop myself eating so much so <laughs> it's like yeah i'm looking forward to that oh but, that's um, cool yeah so that's gonna be it's gonna be nice and uh but I, yeah you've yeah. said uh yeah just something interesting well there's a couple of things that were interesting um it just made me think of a couple mm. of things with the um what, what is it you said something about like you know you're working for yourself you're working on yourself um mm -hmm. there's well, yeah, doing is like always feeling like you're doing, right? And um, and that is, yeah, I want to like maybe explore that a little bit because I'm of, mm -hmm. I'm wonder, I'm wondering. I've had some thoughts about it, haven't clearly uh, clearly figured out yet. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just need a cough. Something. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So, um, I, you know, like the productivity and play, right? So we know how mm -hmm. good play is for the brain, for you as an individual, yeah. as, um, as a functioning individual. So, um, and, and then it's juxtaposed with pro productivity, like um, being productive, doing things which are moving you forward in your life. And they're not always mm -hmm. playful is the, is the idea. Um, because there's certain things you just have to do. They're going to be mundane. And uh, yes. the way I've been trying to look at it is trying to introduce or trying to make that product productiveness playful. So Great. like, um, and just like, for example, like, what, what can I think of? Obviously, yeah. So with the line of work that we do, right? It, like on the face of it, every result is glamorous, you know, you just like, you get to train all day or whatever it is. It's like, no, that's not what's happening, number one. But no. Like that's one aspect of the work that we do. The other aspect, obviously, like every other business, is a shit ton of admin that gets needs to be done. So, mm -hmm. with just using that that mundane example, it's like no one wants to do admin. I don't want to do my bookkeeping, but it's got to be done. Otherwise, I'm just going to be um, I'm just going to be in a terrible position at the year end, and my yeah. accountant's going to be like, "What the hell are you doing all year? <laughs> it's yeah. just not it's not a good place it's to be." Chaos. Yeah. So, so yeah, but what I've what I try and do is associate it with the traits that I have, like what is it about the bookkeeping which will be exciting for the kind for, for the, the way I like to express myself. So that can be problem solving, for example. That like reconciliation is like um, is investigative as well. And I kinda like investigating. Mm -hmm. right, so it's kind of <clears throat> it's kind of like uh, okay, so here's an invoice, here's the amount in my, well, here's the amount in my account. And it's like, oh crap, you know what? Well, I completely forgot what that was. And I go, I'll go figure out what it is and then mm. where it came from and everything like that. So it's like, okay, there's, then that can be a bit playful because I like problem solving, I like investigating, and then I can make it playful. So that productive thing can be playful. And then also nice. with the work that we do, like face to face with people, yeah, it can be challenging. Like, you know, we, like like one piece of information we give to a client which takes maybe 10 seconds to deliver makes all the difference to them has taken hours for us to figure out yeah right yeah which can happen so um and i and like you know it's the same like i think of it like cooking as well cooking you spend all this time you put all this love into making your food and then it's like you know you enjoy it so much it's gone in 10 minutes and i know just got it, T 10, minutes? In 10 minutes lol five minutes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 30 yeah. seconds yeah, lol. It's, uh, <laughs> it's always it's always a thing. And so the the thing like I used to get like used to grind my gears was uh, the amount of effort you put into an outcome, and the outcome is just a moment in time, right? But uh, like performing you have though, to, you know, yeah, but carry for on, you, yeah, for sure. Um, so what instead it is is like okay, that I could like a client could present a problem and I'm like, you know what? You, you could easily be like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> that's like, that wasn't, that wasn't, I wasn't anticipating that. That shouldn't have come out of it. But yeah. that's the point, you know, that's, I mean, like, yeah. it, it, that's the thing we should expect every session, something random to just have, <clears throat> yeah. just come about. Sorry, I'm getting a tickly throat on what's going on. That's okay. Do you I'm want me to talk while you sort out? 
Um, there you go. What, there you go. I'm back. All right, you're right. Okay. Just had, just had to just had to cough it out. Sorry. And yeah, like um, yeah, I'll give you a chance in a second, but I'll, I'll finish it up. But <laughs> the idea, on. the the idea is, is like okay, that hour's worth of investigation is like okay, well, um, I can I I can enjoy it. It can be productive, but I can make it playful as well. So I can because it's something that can feel like play because of the things I can associate with that with. You know, I can associate with that uh, that with um, the traits I like to. Um, build at least if I don't have them currently or if I'm like uh, so like I said investigation problem solving critical thinking um, mm -hmm. application like communication as well so learning a concept breaking it down into something that's uh, able to be communicated to somebody who doesn't understand it for on that on that uh, high resolution level so um, yeah and then it can be playful when you when you start to enter that zone. You can turn productivity into playfulness, and it doesn't always have to feel like a grind, right? And mm -hmm. I think in a lot of ways I'm quite lucky like that. And um, when I have that balance right, I just don't ever feel like I need a break. You know, I just don't ever feel like I need to That's take nice. a holiday or something. But uh, but obviously those times do come, and. Um, and it is good to break away anyway, just so you refresh and recharge and just, I don't know, get even more inspiration for the work that you do because you just, like, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, something like that. 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think there's um, there's something there is like, how can we turn the things that we do that we generally think are, like, you know, we, 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 we make them like a chore, we make it difficult for us to uh, execute them, even though we know we need to do those things to have a good day. Well, how do we make it so that we're actually going to enjoy those things? Is and I think one of the ways of doing that is making it playful. And one of the ways you can make it playful is make it um, have something to do with uh, the traits you like to express and uh, the things you like to do. Finding elements of the work that you need to do that will relate to that part of you which you uh, which uh, which brings out enjoyment. Mm. And something I do to, I guess, make it fun, especially when there's bookkeeping and accounts and things like that, because I cannot stand them. I cannot do, I cannot stand number crunching at all and looking through and doing all that sort of stuff. And I am very naughty. I do it at the end of the year because I just can't face it week to week. Um, but what I tend to do to make it fun is it's almost like a time crunch for me. I tend to, it's not race against the clock because then it gets messy and you can miss things. But I, I kind of like to, a bit like you, like a puzzle, I tend to break it down and go month by month or whatever it is. And, and then I look at it and we'll zoom out and go, well, it's only going to take you a couple of hours realistically. And then you zoom back in and then you get it done. And you, it's almost like you're trying to stick to this timeline and this this, this level of, of flow that it, it takes to get to the end of, finishing your accounts and it's something I do with my week as well if I think of my week next week I, I will go into a bit of overwhelm if I zoom out and go oh I've got loads of sessions and I've got to do this and 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 you know and and it is pressured like in our line of work uh, I feel that it is pressured you know you you have to every hour counts right when you're teaching and you're teaching rehab and you're teaching people that have bad backs or bad knees or whatever it is and they've come to you because they need help Every hour counts, you know, of your schedule. It's not like an office job where you're, I don't know, sorry, I haven't done an office job for a very long time, but, you know, some of it's admin, some of it's Zoom calls, some, whatever it is, you know, time tends to go a bit quicker. We can talk about this in a bit, may, maybe. Um, but when you're with a person, that's their hour, that they've come to you so that you can help them. So every minute of that hour counts and you have to do a good job for that session however many times a week you do sessions for and when I think of that I go into a bit of overwhelm it's like and I teach zoom and I teach quite a lot of people on zoom and then I go into it even more overwhelmed because I was like oh my god I've got so many people that are on this zoom class and I don't know them and you know I've got to do a good job and what if what if, and so what I tend to do and what I was thinking about when you were talking is like to make it playful, to make it easier, to make it more um, bite-sized for me, it's like I take it one step at a time, one session at a time, one moment at a time, one minute at a time. 
and something I do, I don't plan any of my sessions other than my classes because you don't know what's going to come in. Like you said, you you literally don't know what they're going to walk in with. They could be like, I've got hurt my tongue with that, so I can't do anything that you've just planned. So <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're yeah. like, okay. Um, and then it becomes like a challenge in a way. Then it becomes playful for me as well because it's like, I don't know what's going to walk in through my door next. So, mm. and then that's playful to me as well. And it's also, it's it's like, what am I going to give them? And and it's something that you've described as well. When someone's in a session with me, I have no idea what I'm going to teach for that day. I have an idea. But it starts to just unfold. And I think you've said this about remembering stuff. It's almost like a pathway. And I'm like, oh, and then we're going to do that. And then that'll segue over to that. And then they want to work on that. So we need to do that. So that then, if you take it step by step, moment by moment, and you make it playful in that way, oh, we're going to do this now, we're going to do that. That helps. That helps me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and also something else you said about, I can't remember exactly what you want, what you said, sorry, but it was just something that brought to mind that every time you teach something, that was it, you're trying to relay something momentarily that's taken you ages to learn. But every time you teach someone the things that you've learned, it makes you learn it better. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like every single week I've learned to say something a bit better. I've learned to, to give information over in a different way to help someone else understand it. I've, it's, it's made more sense in my brain so that I can then give it to other people. And so I think that really helps as well. So when we take all those things and, and we combine it, we, I think that makes it playful in slightly different ways that you were talking about, but that's how I cope, basically. So, mm. yeah. yeah <laughs> that's like, yeah, teaching, teaching is the best way to learn. Is, um, mm -hmm. is basically it. Um, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm always teaching as well. Is that you're going into mm. overwhelm, it's like, okay, one thing. Mm -hmm. Pick one thing. One thing. You've, you've broken it down into uh, one session. <laughs> one mm -hmm. session at a time and then the next one moment, moment. Like, just just yeah. thinking about that one moment yeah and yeah and then um because i think that's super valuable because there's um there's always like a million and one things to do and always you look at you look at that list of things that you got to do and then you're like okay where do i begin and you don't know where to begin because you're like i could do this and that would be good to finish but then i could do that and i would be good to finish i could do this and i could do that and then you just spend all that time thinking which one to start yeah. and you haven't even started anything and you're mm -hmm. just stuck you're paralyzed right so you just got to be able to break it down into um just doing that one thing and mm -hmm. um one helpful way actually we were talking about with some clients this week was um um like the, the, like the four quadrants of important urgent important not urgent urgent not important not important not urgent so mm -hmm. if anything nice. goes into that final quadrant basically you know that your dad just never needs to get done get it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay and, uh, and, then, <laughs> and then it's very important to differentiate between what's urgent and what's important because mm -hmm. it can feel like something is urgent but is it actually important and if the answer is no it's like okay well actually that can hold off because most important thing this is what needs to get done yeah. so yeah so there's um that's usually quite helpful uh, quite helpful little model to use to hmm. get through that as well it's like okay let me just stick everything in these quadrants and let me see where it goes all right great everything that's in that urgent important part that's getting done everything that's in the important not urgent part that's also getting done and then mm -hmm. yeah and then take it from there it's hard to motivate yourself sometimes even though you've got these quadrants and stuff like that and you know that you know whatever it is within your work that needs to get done is important and it might not be urgent but it's important and it will help it's it's, it's hard to motivate sometimes I think so then we come back to that whole start with one thing and then just mm -hmm. see where it takes you even if it's 10 minutes per day and before you know it you've done it and yeah. and I think that's important because sometimes we all lack motivation other things other factors come in you're tired, whatever, something happened, you know, there's other things to deal with. And and it is hard to motivate sometimes. And whichever, whatever we're talking about, like you, if, if it's a client, then I haven't done my exercises, sorry. Um, no worries, just start again. Re, restart, carry on with the breathing. And, you know, for me, it's, it's just motivation to do everything within my week that isn't urgent. It's important, but it's not urgent. It doesn't need to be done now, like making dinner, you know, that kind of thing. So, 
Um, and then it comes yeah, back to that whole thing of, carry on, sorry, yeah, you carry on. on. Comes, comes, comes back to, sorry, yeah, there's a slight delay. Um, the, uh, no, sorry, sorry. I, yeah, I think the Wi-Fi is a little bit weird today. Um, oh, I've lost my thread. Don't worry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Wi-Fi. Gone, just gone out of my head like that. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like the thing about the thing about motivation there is as well is like if you lose that motivation, you're kind of losing touch of why something is important. Yeah. And then, so this is where I was talking about. I was like, I was out of tune basically with my ideal and staying away from my my hell. So mm. I've had to recalibrate to that as well and just keep um, like keeping my mind and bring back that feeling of like, what is it to be in my ideal scenario and what is it to be in my hell scenario? And I'm all of a sudden I'm like. Oh shit! No, I'm doing all these things. I'm getting it done. I'm getting it done around now, right now, right? So, so the panic motivated yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, no, it's like well, it's it's more like just reminding myself. It's not even panic. It's just kind of uh, it's just realizing that here's the dichotomy. Where do you yes. want to live? If you want to yeah. live in hell, then fine, leave all that shit. Don't do it. Just mm -hmm. have a terrible day and be worse off than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you know you're going backwards basically. And that's like you know that's standing still. It's like I'm not doing anything. Mm. Um, it's not like I've deliberately taken uh, a step backwards, but because I haven't done anything, it is taking a step backwards. Yeah. And so, I see. Um, but then it's like, okay, well, my ideal requires me to do these, take care of these responsibilities, and therefore I'm just going to do it because now mm. all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is why I do this. This is why I've got to do the damn accounts, you know, so I don't have a terrible day and yeah. uh, I don't screw myself up. And, it's kind of, um, it's like, you know, the idea of like prevention versus cure. It's like, you know, you get cured of something, you're like, oh my God, I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful. But if you prevent something, there's never something that's happened to be thankful for um, you know, that you're out of. So Still be thankful, you have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you need to actively be like, well, if I don't do this, this is the, this is the outcome of that. If I do do mm. this, here's the outcome and this is better off. So... Okay, I better better keep that in mind because mm. because because it's not obvious how it manifests um, unless you actually genuinely think about it. It's mm -hmm. um, it's easy to just let things go. So I find that um, and it's a skill. You know, it's a bit of a mental skill. It's like you got to be able to um, recalibrate like that mentally, and then you get better and better and better at recalibrating where those periods of feeling out of tune and feeling demotivated have become less and less and less. So. Mm. Yeah, there's um, there's there's ways of combating that lack of motivation. You know, it's just bring it back to what's important, and then you're like, bam, I'm Definitely. in, I'm back in the game. I think it also comes back to, but as you were speaking, you know, we talked about in the past about asking for help as well, like asking mm. for professional help. And I was thinking yeah. as you were talking about, you know, my health and fitness goals and how to stay on track, and actually having someone train me. It's been that's been really cool. Like actually asking for the help and then getting the help and having to show up and do the work, um, mm -hmm. even when I don't want to, is is uh, is great because you afterwards you then know that you're on on track with your goals and you feel better for doing it, even though you didn't want to and you probably would have sacked it off had it just been you. Um, but therein lies the motivation as well when you are feeling a little bit off asking for help and getting that professional help in whatever context is really useful, whether it's a business uh, a, a, a business contact and it's someone to help you in business or if it's a health and wellness contact, it, whatever it is, it could be nutrition, you know, uh, your body, whatever. So that was just something that came to mind when you were speaking. It's like yeah. it's, it's okay to get that help as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's actually ideal to get that yeah, help. Yeah, it's perfect. If you can, you can do it. Yeah, it's like, you know, you accelerate yourself through the issue that you're experiencing mm. instead of like, instead of like wallowing in it and sinking in it like it's in a, you're in a bog for like 12, like a year. Yeah. And it's like, go get the help in like eight weeks, you're sorted. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like the, 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 the time cost of it and is, uh, is completely worth the investment in um, the, yeah, the offset of the time cost is completely worth the, worth the investment. And um, yeah, how's your strength training gone this week? Really good. 
Really good. I did two this week. Um, so we did legs on Monday yeah. and, yeah, yeah, legs on Monday, arms well, Friday. You're well on your way to becoming Judy Dench. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting consistent. Yeah, I am. Um, no, so we did legs on Monday and, sorry, arms, back and abs yesterday. And, uh, and it's interesting just to see how my body works like I cut up really quickly in my upper body but yeah. n not so much in, in, in my legs and, and, and my ass <laughs> so okay. it's just like you just gotta like get you gotta work really I've got to work harder on my legs etc than my upper body so it's a, just mm -hmm. a really interesting note about body types body shape and how much work you have to apply to different areas you know mm -hmm. it's just and I'm like why but yeah I suspect it's from all the boxing training, legs are, I don't know, harder, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's probably been really carry, good. Probably carry just more, carry more, more fat. fat. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's coming, it's good. Um, I just hope, you know, if as and when I see you again, and you're not, you're like, you haven't changed at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, yeah, where's, where's Judy Dedge? Bring her out. <laughs> In fact, you look fatter. What's happened? No. <laughs> it's like you start rocking. Out. You start like walking around with like, you know, your, your butt is just sticking out oh like really far. And you're just like pigeon walking your way around <laughs> because you're just like six months into strength training. You've just got a bubble butt now. <laughs> <laughs> no. because I've been really on point with my nutrition as well so no 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 I mean like no, you'll have a, oh I see you'll like a, the, the JLo yeah. bum I thought <laughs> what do you think I meant I don't <laughs> know that I just like grown I wasn't sure <laughs> <laughs> no he's like yeah you get the, oh, the you'd be working the gym on butt. Working the glutes yeah the gym butt the, yeah. the peach no, butt but I, th I think and you know unless and we were talking about it in previous podcasts about nutrition unless I really go for it and go into that sort of transformation, proper bodybuilding and up my nutrition loads. I don't think that's going to happen because I'm not going to up my nutrition loads. I mean, yeah. yes, I'm going to eat a little bit more, but I'm not going to be like, you know, like that. <laughs> I, want, I want to see you fill out the screen. I want you to be so broad that you just, <laughs> you're just as wide as the screen from the same depth, obviously. <laughs> I've just got lats and, and, yeah. and my neck is like is like Tom Hardy's. No. Yeah, solid. You know, Bronson. I just got a toy Jude Bronson. <laughs> oh god. Another All one. the names. All the names. Tom Hardy's traps are nuts though. That can't be real, you know? Oh, for, especially B Bane, yeah. Cray Cray. Yeah, um, he, was yeah. doing, he was doing stuff like I think he was carrying his mate up and down stairs and stuff like that as like part of his training. He just he just completely bro scienced it. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> he what, sorry? Bro scienced it. You know, oh I science. see. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. So you don't think he had any extra help? Do you think he just has that kind of body structure and he cut up because he can, because he's just got that body type? I don't know. Or do you think he had help? I don't know the details for him getting swole for Bane in okay. The Dark Knight Rises, but I know when he played Bronson, he was just doing some rago training. He was just doing his own thing. Okay. And um, yeah, and he just, yeah, he just basically carried like one of his heavy mates up and down stairs and stuff like that, um, which is pretty jokes. But I guess for Bane, like he probably more well known then and like the yeah, kind of movie was. that it is as well he probably just got some more professional help I don't know speculating sorry when I say he help is... I mean drugs that's what I mean like do you think he, oh, he, right. he he had steroids or do you think he was just that was purely just Tom Hardy and his structure um I don't know it might be might be just his structure because with uh, he's a stocky guy and I think he's, he put on like yeah. 20, 30, 30 pounds of muscle and that's not like outlandish to do in the time frame that he did it, I think, especially okay. the amount of training that he would have been doing. But who knows? It's quite easy. Like, it's quite easy to just, you know, 
get your hands on it. It's not like it's illegal for him to do because he's not an athlete. So why not? No, I, I'm just, I'm always fascinated. I'm, I'm yeah. always fascinated. I have no, I'm just, I'm just like, what do you think? What? Yeah. I mean, it was just unbelievable, his body. But I remember Tom Hardy from Warrior, which is a, a an mm. MMA film. And um, he was ripped in that. So yeah, he's just, I think he's probably just built it up from there, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah, he just gets, um, he's, yeah, I think he's got the frame to get those kind of traps. Yeah, beef up. Sure. I have not. Yeah. <laughs> what? I have not. I, I don't know. I want to see this. I want to see this. <laughs> That's going to be our picture, isn't it, this week? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Do it. That's a lame attempt. Come on. I you're can't. Just, you're, just, you're just doing this. <laughs> just, just basically roll your shoulders forward and lift your traps up. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's all I've got. Now do a face. There you go. That's it. <laughs> all right. We need to work on your posing as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going on stage. We're good. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's for our pictures. Oh, I'm sorry. The... Okay. Of course. Um, uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, ma'am. It's. Um, yeah, steads, why not? Yeah. Just yeah. get your beefing up, use them. Yeah. If, if, you, if you're like, oh, maybe I could do, maybe I, maybe I fancy that Tom Hardy body, just get you, get you beefed up. Mm. <laughs> no, thanks. What would you, would you think of that on a, on, a, on a frame like mine? I don't know, I'm not sure about that. I think it would look Beef. hilarious. Thanks. That's <laughs> the look I'm going for, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what are you like five two yeah 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 you know five two and then just being like 200 pounds of just bulky muscle i'd just be so weird to look at can you imagine how, you, how, how did we get that? here how did we get onto this this is hilarious uh, um yeah i'll blame you i'll tell you you started um, it you asked hulk me about dude. Here we are. i know i'm sorry hulk dude. yeah hulk dude um <laughs> Yeah. yeah, let's 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 carry on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the but strength training is going well, right? So you're it's enjoying great. It. What are you doing at the moment? What's your training at the minute? Ah oh, man, it's, uh, well, this is part of why May was shit. Oh right, is this like, you're not training as much? Yeah, I just kind of like lost it. Well, you know, you know how the whole thing of like um, yeah, I had some priorities and like just basically working on something for my business, and it's just like taking up time, but then. It's just following my own advice, really, is um, just do the thing to have the power, is, uh, as uh, Umar used to put it. Mm. And the one thing that gives me a lot of power is, like, if I take care of my body and then I just feel like I've had a good day, um, everything else is better Same. off because I don't have that in the back of my mind. Same. And so I lost that, and so I've been back on track with it over the last week um, yep. to a, on a more consistent de degree. And uh, yeah, and that's really, that's, yeah, it's helped me out a lot. It's, uh, it's making a big difference again, just, you know, something that I value. Good. Don't ever lose the thing that you value. I brought it back and I feel better for, for doing it. It's like, you know, it's physical exercise. I think better when I've done physical exercise. I have more cognitive capacity. I'm a bit more creative. Um, yeah. I've got more in the tank for the work that I do. Like all, the, all, these, all these benefits, which, you know, you get them taken away from you for a period of time, you bring them back and like, oh yeah, this is why I do that. Yeah. This is why I enjoy doing this. So, um, and also partly because like, uh, uh, yeah, I felt a bit directionless as well because you know, pre-lockdown I had a pretty strong plan in place for mm -hmm. what I, pre, pre COVID, I had a pretty strong plan in place for what I was looking to achieve over, the, over like a two year period. But then, yeah, I just kind of got derailed. But you know, I'm doing what I was doing, what I can, doing what I could with the stuff that I had and with the um, uh, with the equipment that I had. And um, but then, yeah, because it wasn't related to a specific plan, it was more maintenance. It was just doing things and then not realizing um, that it's not. Uh, yeah, it was just it was there was no specific plan in place. So like the you know the idea of that motivation again started to wane and because uh, I stopped feeling inspired by it and then I was letting this other you know this this work project kind of like take over a little bit more mm. but um but finding that balance again and just getting myself recalibrated and just doing the planning and be like okay three times a week I'm going to do this kettlebell workout that um, right. I've got lined up for myself and um 
and yeah, and just do that, non-negotiable, just make it happen. And it's working on my cardio, it's working on my conditioning, it's working on a bit of strength at the same time as well because kettlebells are a fantastic tool for helping you build up your Amazing. conditioning while putting, while maintaining or keep or putting on muscle mass. So yeah, got excited by that again. And uh, kind right. of just found something which is like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be consistent with this for three times a week, 12 weeks, and I'm going to build up that effort level. Um, the amount of time I spend under tension with these exercises of, and, um, and in, like, you know, theoretically by the end of it, I would have built up a certain amount of capacity. Uh, my cardio will be drastically improved and, um, yeah, like knock off some of that lockdown weight as well, you know, and, um, <laughs> do you have lockdown feeling, weight? I just, I just feel chubs. Like, okay. uh, I don't, I don't, I could be this weight, but as long as I was lean, that's fine. Mm -hmm. is, um, but I don't feel lean at the moment. I feel like okay. I'm just a bit soft. Okay. And I fucking hate that feeling. So I hate that feeling. Yeah. So I don't don't feel good with it. So I'm um, yeah. So I just had to kind of find something that I was gonna be able to do, and um, soon maybe you know, like I'm just kind of waiting until we have like free access to stuff again. Like I can't mm -hmm. be bothered with protocols and shit where you, wherever you go. So when next month comes around and hopefully, you know, everything going accordingly, um, we're able to open back up, then yeah, I'm just gonna go back into the gym and have a plan for that. And mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that was, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to doing. But otherwise in the meantime, it's just uh, go for a bit of walk or, um, but the, the kettlebells is the one where I'm working on my conditioning and I'm gonna do that a few times a week. Nice. And um, besides the just like movement stuff to, keep my body supple and stable so yeah, yeah. good and again yeah. it's hard i mean even though we're trainers and i think it probably a question you get asked and i get asked is like oh, you must work out the whole time and it's like well actually no <laughs> we're the last people that work out you guys work out before we work out um it's hard to motivate yourself once you've been training people all day to then go and train yourself on your own without help i mean that's that's hard. And pre-lockdown, you know, we were both training in martial art gyms. And, and when you've got somewhere to go and you know that you're going to get a damn good workout and you're going to see your community, all your mates, that gives you incentive as well, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. when you haven't got that, it's very easy to stagnate, I think. So, yeah. but I totally get it with all the protocols. I, I, I was in the gym with my mate yesterday and it's just, you know, you can clean everything down. And um, I don't think that's going to go. I think we're always mm. going to have that. But I, my thing is, it's like, how how do contact sports fit in with all of this? How is that going to work? I mean, I know you can do it within a well, bubble. Well, I don't, I don't have that opportunity. So how well, is it, no it going to work? There's no specific guidelines for it um, because I wanted the same thing with grappling. But like since mm. the, the May easing of the lockdown last week, no, it was this Monday, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so since the lockdown easing on Monday, they're like, yeah, you can do group classes in a gym again. BJJ clubs count as uh, gyms. They have group classes. Okay. You can go to a group class, but they've still got their, you know, COVID compliance as well. Don't show mm -hmm. up, but like, you know, get your temperature tested and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so they're still following that compliance. But basically, next month, 21st of June, if it goes um, accordingly, then... They're just saying we're easing off all restrictions, so then that just means people can go back to doing activities normally. I don't know what level of COVID compliance there will be, but if it's supposed to be free restriction, then it's basically down to the facility itself what yeah, they right. want to apply. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, and it's also part of me is just like I'll just let everybody else figure out the shit show <laughs> that this is. And yeah. Then, yeah. And you've kind of figured that. Well, you've out, got it. And I'll get I'll get back into the mix. Go back so, in. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's basically it. Yeah, I but, feel like um, that. Yeah. Yeah. But having said that, yeah, I just rolled with a friend on Thursday as well, which was great. Great. Got a bit of jits in and I was like, oh nice. my God, this felt so good. It does, right? It like, I've forgotten that. Yeah. It was just, oh man, because it's like, yeah, with jits is, you can, like, that can be playful as well. And you can have, be yes. having fun with it and it's physical and it's just, you, you know, you're activating it. It's like recognizing patterns and, um, like you know you knowing like you like recognizing something is about to happen and then just like doing something to work with that or try and make yeah. something happen against that it's just um yeah it was great i just had so much fun good and um yeah i was like i can't fucking wait to get my ass handed to me all over again when, not long hopefully when things yeah when things go back to well things go back when uh when we enter the next phase 
and go, I can like go back to clubs and train freely again. But yeah, um, be nice. I don't know where that would be. Yeah, see what happens as and when. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Again, it's, it's. I'm just going to wait and see. I don't know how I feel about going back yet. I just yeah. Let's we'll see what happens. I'm quite happy with my training at the moment. Um, and again, it just it just feels like it changes moment to moment. So I'm just going to put my structure in place, how I want to work my week. I will say, and I talk about it all the time with you, don't I? That I just I have to be so mindful of how much energy I expend in my own training, in my sessions. It's, it, I have to have enough capacity for everything. But at the moment, my training suits me. I have mm -hmm. just enough energy for everything. And... So yeah, we'll see what happens as as life opens up. Maybe I'll have more energy and I can go and train and do some grappling. We'll see. Um, I don't know how. I, do I, I don't think I'm ready for it yet. So yeah, do it. Do it. I'll mm. do it. You do it. <laughs> exactly. Just ask you and watch your way through it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah, that's um, that's going to be a lot of fun. It will. And yeah, tell me what you've been thinking. Because pre-podcast, you were talking mm. about like uh, communication, eye contact, openness. Like, what was yeah. that? Yeah, so we it was didn't just, delve into it. I was just like, let's just get into it on the podcast. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it was just something that happened during my week. So I got my vaccine this week, and um, it was just like oh a. You got no. nano chips, nano particles. You're being tracked by oh the government. Oh my god, I'm so scared. <gasps> I mean, they're going to basically see me go from my house to Noah's school and back, and that's about <laughs> it. And be like the most boring life in the world. They're going uh, to be looking at a GPS system, be like, "She moved." <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Yeah. Oh no, no. Yeah. I mean, why? What? Yeah. Track me. Dollars. I mean, really? Uh, yeah, I have one of them. And um, it was just a really interesting experience that made me think about human nature. And I, I, I'm sorry if this is a boring story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. But so I was waiting for my, waiting to queue up to get into the place. <laughs> I know, everyone's like that. So whenever right. you do that, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a boring story. You're like, oh, great, everybody just shut off. Just switch off now. Go no, on. but everyone <laughs> might be like, no, let's just wait and see, because she's a bit of a nutter, so it probably won't be boring. Um, <laughs> and yeah. I just found it all really interesting. This guy in front of me, this lovely lady was taking names and getting people into the centre. And this guy rocked up and was like... And she was like, oh, hey, can I take your name? And he was quite gruff with her. And he was like, and she couldn't find his name. And she was she was flapping a little bit. And he was like, should be there. I booked him two hours ago. And then she was like, oh, that's probably why. And I just sort of stepped back. And I was like, human nature is such a weird thing. Like, this is a person that's given up her time to get you to into, to volunteer, to get you into a centre so that you can have potentially something life-saving that might help save a life of someone around you, regardless of what you believe or not. And it was like, why, why be like that? And I don't know, it comes back to this whole thing for me of, of treating everyone the same as well. You know, it was like, why, what, and I get it, like you might have had a bad day, it's been convenient, it's not great, ah, whatever. But I feel like everyone's a human being and this woman's given up her time to be here to help. And isn't that a truly amazing thing? She's come in and it's OK. I don't know if it is risky to be in this position, but you're dealing with the general public public and you've given time up away from your family to be here. And why talk to her like that? And, I, you know, and, and, and it's just something that I thought about. So I've rocked up and, and me, I'm always like, hello, hi. And. And she got, and it was so interesting. She like, she's like, I was like, my name's Jude Hersham. And she's like, ah, oh, I recognize your name. And it was such an interesting conversation. So she's like, are you Jewish? And I was like, <laughs> no one's got that in the whole history of forever. Has anyone ever asked me that question? And I was like, <laughs> most people say, are you German? And, you know, and then they kind of, question whether I've spelt my own name right because it's got two H's in and maybe it's just one H. Are you sure it's got two? So it's like, you know, they just, you know, 
question everything. And I'm like, no, no, I've lived with this for a very long time. It has got two H's in. But she was like... Just one, just one day, just go, oh, my God, yes, I'm so sorry. I'm not knowing how to spell my own name for four plus decades. I know. I was yeah. like, I'm older than God. I know how to spell <laughs> my own surname. Please. Um, but it's just, and you know, that's the normally that's normally how the conversation goes. So for her to be like, "Are you Jewish?" I was just like, "Yes." Oh my god! <laughs> and uh, we had this lovely conversation, and she was so cool. And this was cool. So then she walked me in, sat me down. And this was the whole power of communication and eye contact. So then she'd obviously had a word with her mate and she came over because I made eye contact with her and I smiled. Everyone And everyone else, I would like to know that everyone else was like this, yeah, on their so phone, phone, looking down, head like that. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, everyone's posture, which got me. <laughs> and I tend to not do that anyway. I'm often up and looking and like trying to figure out what's going on. Like a you know, like that. <laughs> proper always and I made eye contact with like the main woman I was just like smiley even though I had my mask on and she came over and she was like what's your name I was like Jude Hirsch I'm like oh yeah I know you know you and uh and she was like look we're running a little bit late but let me see what I can do and within one minute I was I'd had my vaccine and I was in the 15 minute waiting room and it was just like and, and I felt like a rock star but it, that's by the by it was just like the power of treating people like a human being, making eye contact and actually having a connection. It's like, that might have been a shit story, but the message underneath it is like, it's like, just treat people like human beings, like make that eye contact, have a chat with them. Like these people are giving up their time, man, you know? And, and you know, like I've read stories recently about how awful people are being to people in like Tesco's and Sainsbury's and I'm like, they're people, what, you know, and, and, you know, people like just trying to get past them because, you know, it's locked down and they need their stuff. And it's like, these people are like on the line, front line to help you get your food in what is quite a difficult time and, and treat them. So I don't know, it just, it, it's just something that I think about that, that always treat people well. And, and it's so powerful. It really is, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're a billionaire or, or they're me, whatever it is, do you know what I mean? It's like, just just humanise people and and make that eye contact. It's just so important. And it goes back to that whole cheerleading thing I talked about in a, in a couple of podcasts ago where you just don't know, if you have a conversation with someone and they might be having an awful month, an awful, or it just something awful might be happening, you might just say something that turns it around for them and makes them feel better and then that then spirals into something else and then they make headway into doing I don't know I just am very much aware of that and so that was my story hmm. <laughs> rock star getting your jab ahead of everyone else I was not a rock star but I just sound it really funny it's like the power of like looking someone in the eye and then they're like let yeah. me see what I can do and it was yeah. like you know too right. Yeah. As, um, <laughs> You're speechless, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think of like, yeah. It's, it it's, such clear, a, it's clear. a weird story, but I, do you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's like, yeah, just be cool. There's clearly, I mean, yeah, the, the value of the value of doing that kind of thing. I mean, even just for your own sake, it's like, it doesn't even have to be for anyone else. It doesn't even have to be to make somebody else day, else's day. No, but it's just like, it'll just, make you, it'll just make you feel better. Just do it from a selfish point of view. Right? Yeah. It's just because when you do that, it's like, actually, like, can anything ever be completely selfish is, uh, is a question um, that you, know, you could explore. Because even if you do something for your own benefit, even if it is like, you know, I'm going to help someone out because it makes you mm. feel good. It's like, well, you've, just, you've helped someone out as well. So it's not necessarily yeah, just a right. purely selfish thing. So in this case, it's like, yeah, all right. Like, I like being this way. If I'm not this way, I feel like a bit of a dick. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I did something which was um, more in line with my character, put in a way, I prefer communicating in a way that I prefer to communicate in, which, um, which is <laughs> it's socially beneficial as well. So, you know, 
you you help you just basically made somebody else feel better about the work that they do as well as making yourself well, feel better because <clears throat> you know, you've just behaved in a way that makes somebody else feel humane so yeah, yeah and then you got something more out of it yeah yeah it's it what you know it was never for benefit it's just mm -hmm. I just think making eye contact and communication is it's just it, it's so lost at the moment. Like everyone's on their phone, everyone's staring down, which annoys me anyway, because everyone's posture. I mean, you know, great, I'll be in I'll be in business forever. <laughs> but it's just everyone's like just got their heads there looking at their phone. And uh and I just found it very sad that mm -hmm. we were all so locked in and the masks don't help, do you know? And and I just think, actually, and, and I think I was doing probably a bit of present, be, be present, be conscious, you know, look around, look at stuff, see what you're doing. And I just think mobile phones right now are taking that away from us as well. Like we're mm. so locked into this world of likes and follows and texts and emails. And does it matter? No. Yeah. No? It's, look um, around. But exactly. That's also, yeah, something that just kind of came up a little bit. Um, for me over the week because um, I'd heard about the, like the idea of it before and uh, it just came up again this week and it was just you know boredom is good for you basically mm -hmm. it is yeah and uh, yeah so I'll get your take on that because mm. with right now is like we're not allowing ourselves to get bored anytime we feel like for just a moment we're a bit bored you know you just turn to your phone you reach. look at you look. scroll something yeah. and you reach but there's um, I can't exactly talk about the the neuroscience of it but um allowing yourself to be bored is essentially creating space for you to become a little bit more creative as well is um you're allowing Correct. yourself yeah to uh, allowing yourself to get bored helps you to start getting to a place where you start to get agitated and go all right i need to do something with myself and because we have something which satiates that boredom really, really quickly, which is something in the palm of your hands, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we get stimulation from it that way, we kill that boredom. But really, what it should be saying to us is, hey, here's some boredom, and the boredom keeps rising until it gets to a point where you're agitated enough to do something. And that doing something, if your phone wasn't there, is going to generally result in something which is more to do with what you like to do what you want to explore mm -hmm. and what is going to be productive for you it could even be something as simple as all right well i better go clean the kitchen then shouldn't i <laughs> or, yeah. and then yeah you, know, you just clean your living space up that's great it's better it's like oh you know i might as well just read a few pages in my book. super oh, productive great. yeah yeah and uh, so you know allowing yourself to get bored yeah is actually an important part of uh, you learning to become productive and placing value on uh, uh placing and uh, doing act, placing action on things that you value so um yeah that's that's a thought i wonder if there's like you know what the counter if there is a counter argument to that but i don't think so because without <clears throat> that kind of boredom like um that overstimulation basically that's provided by social media and phone use and i say overstimulation because that's what it is it's um, again, I was talking about with clients this week, which was, you know, when you know, you're working, you're working on your projects or whatever it is that you're doing and you need to take a break is to actually feel refreshed so that you can have another bout of productiveness is to actually switch off from things that stimulate you. And even mm -hmm. though it feels like it's a very passive thing to scroll through your phone, it's actually highly stimulating uh, for brain centers which are requiring rest after a period of production a uh, period of productivity so you feel like you're doing nothing but actually your brain is still highly stimulated so you just keep going down that path of wearing yourself out mentally mm. whereas if you didn't right. do that you know you got hours more worth of uh, capability uh, in you left so it's um it's an important thing to just regulate your use of these devices and um you know i speak to myself when i basically when i'm saying this i'm just reminding myself that this is something i need yeah. to do and um because it i like how different i feel so much better when i feel focused it's it's such an amazing feeling but it's so easy to lose it because you've just got this distraction machine in, no. in the palm of your hands and uh, so i have to physically remove it from my environment uh, to be able to 
um, get something going for myself to allow myself to like start connecting dots and become a little bit more creative with whatever work that I'm doing and actually focusing on the work that I'm doing and um, not going, oh, wait, let me just look that up. Let me just look this up and then just getting caught in a rabbit hole with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So I wonder, <coughs> can you can you think of, do you think of anything that might be against the idea of being bored? Like, no. Because you could, the, well, because <laughs> you could think of, um, all right, well, maybe it could lead you down some more pernicious activity or <coughs> ne nefarious activity. So that didn't, that didn't, um, that didn't mute anything, by the way. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. It's like, it's like, well, you did that a couple of times. <laughs> You're obviously not going to know, and I realise I'm going to have to tell you that. <laughs> like, I'll mute it on the computer. I'm just like, I can't, I'll, but I'm worried that I'll leave the studio and do something wrong. So, <laughs> so sorry, listeners. I, I won't cough again. Yeah, um, don't leave him. Don't leave him alone with me. Jeez, I'll just talk your ear off. <laughs> I'll probably click cross instead of mute and it, and then you're just, oh. <laughs> I love that. You did it twice and I'm like, I ain't doing nothing, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wicked. That's not, what's he doing then? He, but, oh. <sighs> anyway, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, it's like, well, it's just thinking about what could, what could be said against be allowing yourself to be bored is like okay well you could just go and do some stupid stuff um which yeah which does happen because i don't know like you know stories of teenagers getting bored and they just go i don't know go and set fire to a fucking blue tit or something because that's what you do <laughs> i don't know you know like you're in a park you got some fireworks and you just chuck out some birds i don't know okay <laughs> all right let's break this down yeah yeah, yeah yeah i like yeah, it so yeah so there's there's that kind of aspect is like okay you can yeah. just end up going down um, a really shitty path but how so then I guess the question is like how do you stop yourself from going down a path which is stupid and um, mm -hmm. meaningless and making sure that you allow that boredom to steer you towards something that is meaningful and useful to you a really good question um, so I say it to my son all the time he comes down mommy I'm bored and I'm like good great go and find something to do, you know, go and write a story, go and do something. Great, you're bored. Excellent. This is where the creative comes because I can't stimulate you all the time. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to entertain you or spend money all the time so that you are not bored. You have to find something to stop that boredom. And more often than not, he gets creative, whether it's, and, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit stupid, like you'll start mixing up shit in the kitchen and it's like, okay, yeah, well, good. Oh, You're yeah. not bored anymore. That's brilliant. Um, that was amazing. He just made his own cookie dough. <laughs> I was hungry, so I was bored. So I'll make my cookie dough. Mm. Um, but and, I didn't you know, want to cook it, so I just munched it. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes it'll be like potions or he'll write a story or he'll listen to music or whatever it is, or he'll write music, he'll just start to delve into that creativity. Mm, so, nice. uh, and I read a lot about this a, a little while ago. So yeah, it's really important to be bored. And I think that's down to parenting and social structures and social circles, whether you're gonna go do something stupid like set fire to a blue tit, as you said. <laughs> Just, just to note, I, that's not something I've ever done. I've never abused animals. <laughs> With the firework. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I could, like, that was no, definitely a trailer it. thought that came up because, I'm, you know, teenagers yeah. do stupid fucking shit. Teenagers do but stupid also, things, but... Yeah, but that, you, uh, adults will do stupid stuff as well. It's exactly. Like, oh, I'm just like, go to the other, pub and like, drink yeah, 11 go and beers get, and then yeah. come out and get shit-faced and whatnot. But that's then down to, like, beliefs and environment and upbringing and mm. goals and things like that. So if you are... For example, when Noah's bored right now, he's going to go and get creative. When he's a teenager, we'll talk again and hopefully the, the creative will just become different. It, I think it just depends on many factors as to if you're going to go and do something stupid as opposed to do something a little bit more creative. Um, it depends on you as a person. But for me... And I, you know, and I'm such a work in progress with my phone. Like I do, I have to do what you have to do. I physically have to lock it away. Don't take it on dog walks. Yeah, you know, and and do things like 
don't look at it straight away in the morning for at least half an hour so that I can set myself up for the day and things like that. So it's so hard and I feel myself being pulled towards it. But I know this whole idea of being bored so you get creative. Yes, yeah, so you go and clean your kitchen and then you feel better about your living space. So you might go and do something else to do with your work or it just it will then take you down a path that if you had just stayed scrolling, you wouldn't have gone down. So absolutely get bored. And it's so hard. Like I have moments where I'm just so tired that I do sit looking at my phone and scrolling. And sometimes that does spark creativity and imagination. But more often than not, it just makes me feel shit because mm. you just see like loads of people working out, looking great. And you're like, oh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> so it's not productive, though, is it? So mm. it is hard. Um, but I know from experience and from watching my kid that getting bored is key to creativity mm. sometimes um yeah. creative is going to look different to me than it is to my son but mm -hmm. creative might be that uh, yeah I get creative within my workspace or my environment or I move better or I go into here and I figure out a flow and then all of a sudden you know that's been more proactive for my work I don't know mm. but yeah get bored definitely mm. yeah I like that I like you like good now go be creative Is yeah it, all right i'll go cook something yeah. in the kitchen or i'll write a story or i'll read a book or and that's just beautiful man there's so much yeah. better way to spend your time than than anything else um yeah i like that and it started making me think of like if you are getting bored this is again because in a world where it's just everything is overstimulation everything is geared towards you not necessarily being in tune with yourself because there's mm -hmm. so much external stimulus yes. coming in. You have to start developing a rock solid sense of yourself and and what does that person do? You know, mm -hmm. that person who is like, you know, this is me at my best, what does that person do? So um, then categorizing that out is okay, well, the, that person reads books about this subject. Um, watches these kinds of movies because it, that they mean something to them. this person uh, does these activities blah 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 etc 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 um you know calls my mum <laughs> because uh it's always nice to tell them you love them you know that kind of thing so important so, yeah yeah so um so then when you start to get bored you one of the things I think would be useful to do is just to be able to snap out of it with that list of like, who is me at my best mm -hmm. like remembering that and then going to do one of those things. So, so it prevents you from doing something which ends up being a complete waste of your time. Um, yeah. Like, you know, socializing is always valuable, all that kind of stuff. So it's just, um, I think yeah. that could be, I think that could be the way like, okay, if I'm bored, then you have to obviously build up that kind of that trigger or that mental you have to build up the memory of basically being in touch with um oh yeah i'm getting bored when i get bored and i, I want to remind myself of the the best kind of person i can be and mm -hmm. that best kind of person does these things oh okay yeah so i'm bored i'm not i'm just killing time so i'm going to go and kill time doing one of these things which is actually going to be really good for me because i'm going to come out of it better off than if i just spent my time doing something else mm -hmm. and um so yeah so you might need to set some reminders for yourself you might need to have something well it's not necessarily setting reminders because when you don't know when you're going to be bored but it can be like something on the wall in your room in your kitchen yeah um, in your really office, good. wherever it is is just like do these things when you're bored you know and you just see it and you're like, oh yeah okay i better i better go yeah. do that um that could be that could be a way to tackle it and um i think also it's important to keep in mind that um sometimes it can you get the illusion of productivity when you're scrolling on social media because if you're anything like me you're following people who you rely on for information or mm -hmm. to point you in the right direction to go and search for something that intrigues you. You know, so me, I'm following a bunch of stuff about neuroscience, about the strength training, about human anatomy, yes. about breath work, all that kind of stuff. So I can see in my feed 
useful information or useful post, useful post, useful post, useful post. And I can be like, oh, cool, really interesting. I could do that for 20 minutes and I've seen like six or seven different posts. And then I can, I can on a surface level, feel good about myself because oh, I've just read some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as I put it away, I'm like, what did I just learn? Yeah. I'd be like, oh, shit. Uh, not a lot, <laughs> actually, because I don't remember it because it was just consumption as opposed to absorption. Nice. And Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah. And that's a problem. So we're consuming all the time. We're not actually absorbing yeah. the information that's in front of us. And so it's the illusion of I've just done something productive for 20 minutes, but actually it's all bite-sized information. It's yeah. not designed to give you like, you know, cause I mean, we write these posts for our, for our Instagram account as well. It's, it's a like, real it's people in, you, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, it's designed to give you something to think about, but if you don't actually go away and think about it, you're just consuming stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just not of, uh, not of any value. So the idea there is, okay, well, just don't do that because I could have learned something a lot more efficiently and effectively if I actually just went away and did the things I would do anyway, which is read a book yeah. or study or um, do something in relation to that. So yeah, you can give you, you can really fool yourself that you're being productive. And that's, um, you got to guard yourself against that basically. You just got to catch yourself out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it just seems like there's a lot of work you have to do for yourself in our modern world and uh, have people around you that help catch that as well. Mm -hmm because that's helpful. Um, but yeah, but that's just the way we set up and that's just the way things are wired right now. So if you want to live your best life, you know, you got you to put, put in some rules for yourself. Too right. And I think that's been a really great reminder for me to, it, it is these bite size, they're super informative, but they are bite size and they are what did you say? The consumer, what, uh, what consumption, not consumption. Absorption. Yeah, and you're not getting you're getting depth, but you're not getting enough depth. As where whereas you were studying it, or you took out one of those books that we have on neuroscience and actually delved into that. This is a really nice reminder for me because at the moment I've got a real block about reading. I just, just mm. can't, and so I end up scrolling, going, "Oh, that's interesting." But then actually, it's not that there's no substance to it. It's just it's, it's, it's almost just that hook to reel you in, isn't it? So that you then go do more study with that person or whatever it is. Um, but actually, damn, just go and read the book. Yeah. Or, or just log on to ID and listen to one of those lectures. I've got like a million of them, you know? Yeah. But there's like this block at the moment and listening to you, I'm like, mm, just put the phone away and actually do something of substance. Because mm. you're going, I'm going to, and I always feel so much better when I've done that study because I'm like, oh, yeah. I remember so much more. That's yeah. so super useful for my clients. Yeah. I, yeah. Because if you Good also, shout. if you, yeah, well, if, if you also accumulate the time that you spend on social media avoiding uh, doing the thing that no. you're like, will be beneficial for me, like, oh shit, that was two hours. I could have read like 60 pages, <laughs> you know? It's no. just depending on, depending on the kind of book it is. But yeah. Sickening. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you don't you don't realize that in the moment. That's the thing. So you no. really like I'm again. I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to anybody mm. else here. I like I have to remind myself to do this a lot, you know. And and that's part of why um, I felt out of tune this month is mm. because I like lost like just those tiny little moments of doing what would have been beneficial for me versus where I was. Let's use that consumption versus absorption, because. Yeah. Um, um, and you know, where the way I think about that is basically because from a nutritional element, like you can consume something, but it doesn't mean necessarily your body's absorbing it because you might have some deficiencies which don't allow you to absorb the food. So mm -hmm. you're not actually getting anything out of it, right? And I, it's like fa it's like fast food. You're consuming it, but if, um, uh, no, that's not really a great analogy. But the analogy for um, the bite size information being like fast food it is what it is because it gives you that little quick oh yeah i feel yeah. like i've learned something nice. like i learned something but actually you go away and half an hour later you're still craving more information because you didn't actually learn anything. scratch the surface right. yeah yeah you just exactly you scratch the surface so um yeah i just i feel like i'm you know i'm talking to myself as much as anybody else because just have to be i have to be guarded against it and um yeah i can't remember where else i was going to go with that <laughs> That's okay. 
I, it, it has brought up, do you remember I was talking to you about urgency culture as well mm. and this whole mm. concept of the first thing that we do when we wake up in the morning is check our phone. Most of us do. I'm trying very hard not to, but I swear yeah. it's like a drug, you know. It's like, I must not check phone. So, you know, it, it does take a lot of self-control to do that, but it's, it's this whole thing around you must answer that email straight away. You must text that person back because you want that, whatever it is, validation, contact, uh, reply, whatever it is, whoever it is. Um, and I don't know why I have that, but I'm trying to get better at going, I'll reply when I have time. I'll get back to them when I've got that, when I'm able to give them a proper reply. I'm not going to check my phone first thing in the morning. I'm going to get down and do everything else that I need to do. And and it's often people say set an intention for the day. I don't really, I haven't really understood what that means yet. I don't really know. It's like my intention for the day is that I need to get through all my sessions. I don't know what my intention is, but I know that I feel better if I don't lie in bed looking at my phone, checking Instagram, checking my text, checking my email mm-hmm. um, before I've even got out of bed because you're responding to other people, whichever it may be, texts, likes, follows, they're all in your space, in your head, in your head space before you've even got out of bed. When really you should be focusing, and it comes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the session, like yourself, self-love, you, your priority, you are your priority, otherwise how are you gonna be good for anyone else? So. That's what I'm working really, really hard on is not getting into that urgency culture of check, 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 check. And it's it's bloody hard, but I think over time it's going to get better. And just taking moments during the day where I haven't got my phone, I'm on a dog walk, I'm journaling, whatever it is. And also another thing, I think you do this anyway, is like eating my food mindfully without yeah. checking my phone. Do you know what I mean? So... And no, actually taking tonight is going to taste so good. There you go. It's going to be there with You're going to enjoy it. Put your it's phone away. Right there. there you are. That's beautiful. Mm. And that is something that I've noticed that I do. I'm like, as I'm eating, I'm multitasking. I'm checking emails. I'm watching, da, 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 you know, and it's like, no, no, you have <laughs> two minutes because that's how quick I eat to eat mindfully. Slow, slow down. <laughs> a pig no longer than that but you know just you've got five minutes in your day to sit and eat your food you don't have to check your phone and it is that whole thing of just being present and in that moment rather than check 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 like being off somewhere else the whole time and I as I said I'm a very much a work in progress and I need to work on it more but I say this as a reminder for myself as well Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, super important. Yeah. Be present. Be present with your food. That makes a big difference. Is I just feel so much happier after I've eaten yeah. when yeah. I've been present like that. Whereas if I've like mm. you know, watched a YouTube video or done something else, it's like I don't even know you've eaten. Enjoy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Don't even don't even realize right. you've eaten. I'm like, Did I eat that? that? God, that went quick. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like all that flavor <laughs> and you yeah. just missed out on it because you were thinking about yeah. something else rather than Exactly. Rather than this fundamental activity you will partake in every day, which is yeah. in, in dis, indispensable to our uh, living. So mm-hmm. just if you show yeah, that's also why you take it for granted because we do it all the time. But it's also yeah. why we shouldn't take it for granted because it's like, this is so important. <laughs> it's nourishing. It is actually for mind, body, everything, it, you know, it, what you eat helps how you move, how you think, how you sleep. So appreciate it. And again, I say this for myself as well as for our listeners. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. That's a good one. Let's leave it there. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. It's particularly useful for me, actually. It felt kind of therapeutic. So thank you, Juju, for helping me figure out some stuff and get some shit off my chest always and, um yeah that was cool so yeah thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, give us a shout on instagram at evolve achieve thrive tell us what you think about this episode 
Um, so that's what you think about the podcast in general. Uh, if you're enjoying it, please uh, sign in to Apple Podcasts and leave a review um, and a rating as well. It really helps us get the show out there so people can discover it. Um, and uh, subscribe to the show on whichever platform you're on, whether that's Apple Podcasts, uh, iTunes, uh, Spotify, Pocket Casts, um, Podcast Addict, you name it, we're there. Go find us and uh, please subscribe to the podcast and uh, get it. It really helps us uh, get more people to uh, pay attention to us. And uh, we feel like we've got a lot of valuable things to say. We'll have some other guests on as well because it went down really well with... Uh, Emily a couple weeks ago and thank you for everybody who tuned in for that episode so we just about missed out on making it into the top 10% of podcasts but it was uh, uh, it was a hell of an effort so thanks for everybody tuning in and uh, see you next time bye